There are thousands of stories in our city, our province, and our country. The job of the Toronto Star investigative team is to dig deep, sometimes uncomfortably deep, to get the truth. One of the best we told this year was about human trafficking. Young girls exploited for sex, sold by Romeo pimps in fine hotels and dodgy motels. We sent a reporter and photographer to get the story. Hot-blooded Caribbean babe, the perfect snack, every man's fantasy. It's so sad to, to read through advertisements like this, where a girl is posing in all these kind of sexy positions, and the reality is far from sexy. She's being beaten, um, branded, raped, um, manipulated, coerced. Some of them are having food and drinks withheld from them. These Johns, a lot of them wouldn't know that. So they'd just read an advertisement and think, here's this, you know, sexy young girl who is doing this of her own free will. But that's actually not the case. I remember one time we were sitting, we were out for dinner. I was messaging some of the girls on back pages and we were just like, you know, who is this girl? And what's her life like? And who, who's the person who's replying to this message? And how much different is she to me? Excuse me. Oh my God. <laughs> well, we went to the Mississauga Gates Inn because we'd spoken to a number of victims who said they'd been trafficked through there before. I remember in one interview, um, one of the victims told us that she'd actually been assaulted in the car park of the Mississauga Gates Inn by her trafficker. We'd seen uh, cars doing laps around the parking lot, waiting for something. Leaving and, and coming again within an hour span. Changing the sheets removing the trash. At, at 1 a.m. Men sitting in, in really flash cars, just watching movies on their iPads like they were killing time. It just became very real. We had spent an hour or two looking for sex trafficking, and then within that time frame, we, we found it. <clears throat> Couldn't send guys for this interview, eh? I knew that for this investigation, I really wanted to speak to a pimp. A number of different officers came up with the name Matthew Dieco. I, I asked why. One of the reasons was his tattoos. You know, he has pimping across his knuckles and fuckle bitches on his chest. But that wasn't the only reason. They said that they believed this man was so narcissistic that he'd agree to the interview. I remember sitting, sitting in the room waiting for him to come in. And I was talking to Melissa and I was like, he has no idea why we're here or what we want. And we only have one hour. We have a window of an hour and he could walk out at any moment. I remember on the, on the drive there, we were just, we were, we were wondering what was going through his mind, like what he thought we wanted to speak to him about. And we were just very nervous about it. In his interview, he looked straight at me and described how he manipulates a girl into falling in love and then breaks her enough to force her to prostitute herself and give him the money. I'm not gonna say I sit here and say I've never done it. When I was younger, yeah, to be honest, that's probably what I did when I was younger. I was young. No, no. So back when you were younger and you were doing this, how do you get a girl to fall in love with you and get a girl to be willing to do this? It just happens. Like Most of these girls, like I said, they're broken. It's not hard. You just got to answer their call. You get in there, you, f you find the crack. I'm going to be making money and I'll be here to take care of you. At the end of the night, you're home with me. Let's get a house. Let's get a... Let's to make a life, but she'll do it. Why would she do it? Because you just sold her a dream. It was the way he said it. It was how convincing he sounded. It was at that point in the interview that I think I got goosebumps because that's when I realized, you know, maybe this could have happened to me. 
I don't know what to say. That's fine. I'm just like, when I look at you, I feel like I'm talking to him. Oh, really? Because I, cause I know, like, when he's going to watch it. He's going to watch it. He's, yeah. Right, I see what you're saying. Okay. So I'm, I'm starting well, to get all nervous. Cause, don't, just take a breath. Yeah. Take a breath. After speaking to the six victims and, and hearing them describe how they fell into this trap, you know, how they became lured into this into this sick and twisted world, this game that they call it. It's all to do with love. They believed that these men were their boyfriends and they believed that they loved them and they believed that they had a future with them. And then they start talking about this world or this nightmare or this reality that they've lived. And it's just unbelievable. You know, I was just thinking, how did you go through this and get out? We're hoping that these girls will read the article and recognize some of the similar signs that maybe they're experiencing in their lives so that they can kind of help themselves. Essentially, we, we really just want to make a difference. We want young girls to read this and think, hey, hey, that's happening to me and maybe I should run. Thank you.